Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to install a smart light switch, no neutral required, so you can control it from your phone just like this. And you can see that light level going up and the bar on the side turning on. We're going to turn this off right now. But what's great about a smart light switch, no neutral required, is that it's going to be compatible with all types of existing home wiring. So even if you've got an older home that doesn't have a neutral wire in the switch box, you're going to be able to install this because it does not require a neutral wire. Now, if you've got newer wiring, it's still going to be compatible with that newer wiring with a neutral wire in the switch box. So it's compatible with either type of wiring. If you don't know what a neutral wire is or you want to identify a neutral wire, you can look down in the description below. We've got links to that in that description in videos that show you exactly what we're talking about. But in general, if you've got a house built before 1980, there's a good chance that you don't have a neutral wire in your switch box, which means you're very limited to light switches that will work without a neutral wire required. But this is one of them. So let's get started showing you how to install this smart light switch, no neutral required. In order to do this, you're going to need this light switch right here, which is a Leviton Decora smart dimmer, no neutral required. It says it right there on the box. You're also going to need the Leviton smart bridge, which will connect to this and then allow you to control it from your Wi-Fi network and your phone, or even if you're remote from your house. Take a look in the description below for both of the products that are required to get this installed. So let's get started installing our smart light switch, no neutral required. So we're going to start taking this apart. This is the existing switch. We turn the power off to the existing switch down at the circuit breaker. So if you haven't done that already, do so. And then it's a good idea if you've got a non-contact voltage meter that use that to check to make sure the power is off or go ahead and use a multimeter to make sure the power is off. So we've already checked and made sure the power is off. And one way that I like to do that is you turn the switch to on, go down to the circuit breaker, turn the circuit off. And then when you come back up and it no longer works, that means that you've got it off. So now let's remove this cover plate. We're gonna remove the existing cover plate here. Sometimes you're gonna have two screws. You would just take those two screws and rotate them out. But we've got a concealed plate that doesn't have any screws on it. So you just usually take a screwdriver down here at the bottom and you pry, that's gonna pry it off there. And then you're gonna be able to take off these two screws to the bracket that holds it on. So let's take off these two screws right here and remove the cover plate. We wanna save these screws because we're gonna use this cover plate uh, for the next switch, or uh, you can just save it to use it on another switch if you want. Now that we've got the cover plate off, check to make sure that the power is off. Once again, use your non-contact voltage meter if you've got it. So once you've confirmed the power is off and it's safe to work on, remove the two screws holding it in place on the junction box. Okay, we've got both screws removed and now we can pull the existing switch forward. And what we're gonna do here is pull it as far forward as we can and we're gonna inspect the wiring here and see what we've got. So in this junction box, we do have an existing neutral wire. It's back there, but we don't need it. We don't need to touch it, do anything with it. White wires are typically the neutral wire. We've got a whole video that explains the different types of wiring. So check that out in the description below if you wanna learn more about electrical wiring. Now, what we've got here on our existing switch, we've got our incoming power here, and that is our hot wire that's down here at the bottom. So we're gonna mark that, or we're at least gonna take a picture and see how this is. There's a little piece of electrical tape on this one that marks that it is the hot wire or incoming wire. And then what we've got up here at the top, this is our load wire that's going up to the light fixture that this controls. And then last but not least, we've got our ground wire here. So if you don't know which one is the hot and which one is the load wire, the most basic way typically to figure it out is that the hot wire is going to be the one that's on the bottom with that incoming power if the switch was wired properly, but that's not always the case. So sometimes it's hard to tell apart the difference between the load wire and the incoming hot wire. Another way to do it typically is you can see which direction the wires go. So I can see that my wire right here, this load wire, it goes up through the top and that indicates that it's usually going up to a light fixture up above. And that's how I would know it's the 
load wire because it's going up the wall to that light fixture, whereas my wire here, this incoming hot wire, is going down to wherever my electrical panel is. So typically that is how it works, but not always. If you've got any question on which one is the hot wire and which one is the load wire, you can always seek out competent professional help, or you can use a multimeter also to determine that. Now, before we remove the wires, I recommend you take a picture of your existing wiring. It's just gonna help you out in the long run if you have any issues, so do that right now. Now that we've taken that picture, we're ready to remove the wires from the existing terminals. So if they're wrapped around these two screws, you're just gonna take your screwdriver and loosen those up and make sure that they're nice and loose, and then you're gonna be able to pull those wires off. So loosen these up as much as you need to. Now, if they're backed wired, sometimes loosening up those screws is going to allow those wires to come out of there, but you've still got to get them removed no matter what. With other back mount systems, you might have on the back here, there's these little tabs right here, if you can see those. And what you need to do is put something in there to release the wire. So let's try down here at the bottom. We push in and then we can release that wire. Okay, we pushed in and then we released it. And you can barely even see, but it says press to release right here in tiny little wire lettering there. So we're gonna do the same thing up at the top. We need to press in and that's gonna allow us to remove this wire. So it's kind of tricky, but, uh, and you may need a pair of pliers, but you press in and then we can move that out. We just pulled it out once we pressed in. And then the last wire we've got here, our ground wire, that's gonna be easy to take off. So we just remove that ground wire uh, with a typical uh, screwdriver here. Okay, and then we can pull that free. Now we've got all of our wires off of the existing switch and we're ready to get our new Leviton smart dimmer switch that doesn't require a neutral wire installed on these existing wires in the existing junction box. So here's the new Leviton smart dimmer switch that we're gonna be installing. And I'll show you the back here. We've got a couple different wires. Our black wire, that's our hot wire. So that's gonna match up with this hot wire that we've got marked with this little piece of electrical tape there. We've got our red wire, that's our load wire. That's gonna go to this other black wire right here. I'll just bend this one up so we can kind of know which one it is. And then our last wire down here, this green wire, that's gonna go to the ground wire uh, that is right there, that unshielded copper wire. So really easy installation with this. We're just gonna wire it up. So we're gonna wire our load wire to the load wire up top. So the red wire is gonna go up top. Our black wire is gonna go down to the bottom to this other black hot wire here. And then last but not least, we're gonna attach that ground wire. They do provide you with some wire nuts, so you can just wire these right together with wire nuts with the existing wiring. We'll take our hot wire to hot wire and wire those two together with a wire nut. Okay, we've got that nice and tight. Now let's take our wire right here. So this is our load wire and wire it to the existing load wire up here at the top that's in the junction box. Take our wire nut and we're just gonna screw these two together. We've got our load wire and our hot wire wired up. All we have left is our ground wire to wire up here. So let's just untangle this a little bit and we're gonna wire up our ground wire to the ground wire on the light switch. Now we've got everything wired up. What we need to do is fold the wires back into the junction box and then we're gonna put that switch in there and secure it onto the junction box. So here, sometimes you have to do a little bit of wire origami to get everything in place, but just start folding those wires in so that you can get this switch fit in there. And then you're gonna be able to put that switch in. Okay, we've got all the wires folded in place. Now let's line up our two screws with the junction box. Okay, we've got that lined up and now we're just gonna secure the switch back to the junction box using a screwdriver and the two screws that are on the light switch. 
in the packaging, they provided us with another screwless cover plate, which is great. So this is gonna look really clean and nice. I always love when you can have it without the screws. I think that just really updates and upgrades the light switch a little bit. So with this cover plate, you just need to pry it uh, apart and then you're gonna be able to secure it. So it's got a backer plate here and uh, you can see up here at the top, it does say top right there. So you're gonna take this and put it on here. Make sure you've got it right side up and then you're gonna secure. Okay, we've got both of those secured now and we're ready to put the cover plate back on. Okay, we just press and snap that cover plate on and now we're ready to go back to our electrical panel and turn that circuit breaker back on so this switch will go live and then we can get it set up. Now, it's important to note that you will need the Leviton app to install this, and you will also need this Leviton Wi-Fi bridge. So this is what the box looks like for that. And this Wi-Fi bridge is what connects to the light switch so that you're gonna be able to use it from your phone or use it with voice commands. So this will work with AleXA, Apple HomeKit, Google, and if this, then that, as well as the Leviton app itself on your phone. So let's go down to our circuit breaker and we're gonna turn back on the power to our Leviton smart dimmer that does not require a neutral wire. Okay, we got the power back on and you can see this light switch, it's blinking right here. This thing is ready to be set up and the power is restored to it. So you can see we can turn it off. We can turn it on and it's got this little LED on the side. So now we need to get the Leviton Wi-Fi bridge set up and installed on the app so we can connect to this switch and then control it from our phone. So let's do that right now. You'll need the Leviton app to connect to the smart bridge which then connects to the Leviton smart dimmer. So we're just gonna download this and then you're gonna need to set up a username and password. Here we are on the Leviton app and we're just gonna log in with our username and password. Here we are on the home screen of the Leviton app. We're just gonna click out of these notifications here and then in the upper right hand corner, you can see this plus symbol. We're gonna click on that. Now we're going to click on add a device. Here it says, what are you setting up? And we are setting up a Wi-Fi bridge down here at the bottom, so we're gonna click on that. It says, before you start, is your Wi-Fi bridge installed and is the status LED flashing green? So let's plug in our Wi-Fi bridge. Okay, the status light is flashing green, so let's click yes, let's go. Leviton would like to use Bluetooth. We're going to click OK. All right, it found our bridge right away, so we're just going to select that. And now we're going to click Next. Now we just need to select our Wi-Fi network and click Next. Enter your password. We're going to click Next transferring your Wi-Fi settings to your Leviton device. This might take a minute. Now we need to give our device a name, so I'm just going to call this one Bridge. And click Next. It says our product is ready to use. Let's click Finish. Okay, now that the Leviton Smart Bridge is set up, we're gonna go back over to our Leviton Smart Dimmer No Neutral Wire, and we're gonna set that up as well. Now we're back over here at the smart dimmer switch and we just need to add it to the smart bridge. To do that, we're gonna click in the upper right hand corner on that plus symbol. That's gonna give us the option to add a device. So we're gonna click on that right there. And then now we need to select what we're going to install. We're installing a dimmer. So I'm gonna click on that right there. And then we've got a couple different options here. We are installing the dimmer with no neutral. So that's this one down here at the bottom. We select that. And then it says, before we start, is your dimmer installed and is the status LED flashing green? No, our LED is not currently flashing green. It's just on. So let's say I don't see a flashing LED. 
It says press and hold the top paddle. After the first seven seconds, the status LED will flash amber, then release the paddle and the status will switch to flashing green. Okay, so I'm gonna hold down for seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can see that the light did change down there. So let's see if it will go to a flashing green. There it is. And I'm just gonna turn this light off to makes it a little bit easier to see. And you can see that it is in flashing green mode now. And I'm gonna click back here. And now I'm going to click yes, let's go. Now it found our dimmer. So I'm gonna click on that one and I'm going to click next. We're transferring the information from your Wi-Fi bridge. This might take a minute. Okay, just choose an icon. We're just gonna leave that icon as it is. And then it says edit the device name. We're just gonna leave it as dimmer for now. And then you can choose a room. We're going to skip this step for now. And it shows you what it works with. So it works with the ALEXA, Google Assistant, and if this then that, we're gonna click finish. And now our smart dimmer is connected. So let's test this out. You can see I turned it on there and you can tell that the lighting turned on and off in the room. So let's turn it on again and then let's see if we can adjust the dimming level. So we're gonna go in here, click on this device and now we can slide this dimmer right here to whatever we want. We can also just turn it on or off. We can go all the way down here if we want down to 10%. You can go in here and you can create an auto shut off if you want. And you can also go into the device settings and we've got some other items here. You can change the name if you want. You can look at the device health. Let's go in the advanced settings and see what we've got here. It says uh, you can change the preset light level options. You've got some bulb options. So if you're having issues with a LED or a CFL that won't dim correctly, you can go around and change that. You've got your dimming range. You can select this, so a minimum and maximum level if you don't wanna have it go too high or too low. And then we can click on device options here. You can uh, turn off the LED down here if you want so that you won't be able to see it if that bothers you at night. Uh, and you can also have it on if you like it so you can see it at night. So it really just depends on your personal preference. And then you can change some of the behavior of this LED bar on this side. So overall, I really think this is a cool switch that's gonna solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. The fact that it doesn't require a neutral wire really opens up the possibilities for making a older home a smart home without having to rewire the entire house because this will work as long as you've got an existing switch there, you're gonna be good as long as you have a hot wire and a load wire, which any switch in your home is gonna have that, that properly functions and works. So that means you're gonna be able to install this Leviton smart dimmer with no neutral there, and it's gonna be much easier than if you had to add that additional neutral wire. Now, even if you do have a neutral wire, this is still gonna be compatible, and it's gonna be compatible with any of the other Leviton switches that operate on the same app. So if you just don't even wanna mess with that extra wire or you're not sure, if you've got a neutral wire in there or not, you don't have to worry about it. If you get this switch, it's gonna work with your wiring, whether it's new or old. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of there and makes it a little bit more of a DIY project. So thank you for watching this video on how to install a smart light switch, no neutral required. If you wanna support us, please subscribe, like this video and check the description below for links to any of these products. Thank you and we'll see you next time.